Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this afternoon, I would like to share my experience and uh, my knowledge is about 5G serving for the vertical industries. Uh, because for the past like eight years, work on the 5G and uh, do a lot of things. And this afternoon, first of all, I would like to share some of the achievements being made by 5G after three years of commercial, uh, commercial deployment. Since 2019, the first 5G network on air, uh, and after three years, uh, I would like to bring you some new data. Base station, right now, in global wise, three million 5G base station have been installed on air. And 5G U subscribers, one billion subscribers, one billion. So just within three years, 5G get this much numbers. I think I can say that 5G runs quite well and develop in a very fast way as compared to the fourth generation because to get the same number, it takes more than five years for 4G. So on the left chart, you can clearly see because in most people's mind, they have the impression that 5G, the wireless technology cannot compare to the fixed network. But look at the chart on the left side. You can see that download speed, download speed of a 5G almost close, almost close to the fixed network, especially for the fiber. So currently, 2022, if you look at most of the 5G network run in the uh, global wise, Average speed of a 5G, especially using the mid-band, can get 200 megabps, almost to the fiber. This capability means that 5G can do a lot of things beyond your expectation. That's why 5G can perfectly serve for the industry. On the right chart, you can see, after three years deployment, one thing changed, DOU, triple. In some case, in some country, almost five times increment in DOU. So I also do the calculation because right now energy efficiency or the carbon emission reduction is the hot topics. So let's see how much the power consumption consumed per bit. So on the right chart, you can see that back to 2019, using 4G network, the power consumption per bit is 20%. Now using 5G, you can see that 5% reduced. Now it's 15%. So we can say that 5G technology, because at the very beginning, everybody say that power consumption, 5G is so, so much, but the figures show you that power consumption per bit reduced by 5%. Furthermore, furthermore, China Mobile also publicates one data, which is very much important, that last year's using wireless technologies, China Mobile saved the power consumption for the verticals by 800 million <clears throat> towns. So not only itself 5G network is green and energy efficiency is good, it can also help the heavy power consumption consuming enterprise to save the energy. So this is the achievement of a 5G. I just want to use one slide to have a summarize. And as the latest wireless technologies, 5G will never stop evolving and enhancing. Everybody uh, get familiar with that famous triangles. Enhanced mobile broadband service on the, on the top and the UILC ultra low latency and also the MMTC for the massive machine type communication. But after three years practice 5G for the vertical industry or the, for the consumer market, we find out more capability need to be enhanced in the future to have 5G perfectly serve for the vertical and for the, for the consumer market. For example, like uplink, uplink requirements is mandatory for most of the case in vertical industries because they require the feedback of the data over the uplink. So that's why we call the UCBC, uplink century broadband communication. The other side, you can see the RTBC. What is that? That's real-time border communication because matter adverse is such a hot topic. So everybody talk about that. But what the requirements of a metaverse to the, on the network support at the same time latency. So that is what we call the RTBC. 
The other thing is coming up, uh, requir uh, the other requirement is the HCS. What is the HCS? Harmonized communication of uh, sensing capabilities and the uh, positioning capabilities. Because when we deploy 5G in the factories or the plants, you can see that position capability is the mandatory in most of the case. So that's why in release 18 and 19 in 3GPP, we are talking about to provide the enhancement of a 5G, we call it a 5G advance. So the message over this speech, over this slide is that 5G will never stop evolving. More capability will come to the 5G network. So 5G, I believe that term, it will take more years, 5G will be more powerful. So this is the general ideas of the market status of a 5G and how it will go in the future. Now I come to my <coughs> major topic because my speech is about 5G for business, 5G for vertical industries. So the best part of a 5G is that it's so powerful, I mean, in terms of the capability. That means that it can not only serve for the consumer market to provide a mobile internet service, but can also for the industry, as I said before. And the roles of the operators became more comprehensive. Usually 5G, uh, the operators like Vodafone, they provide, the, their roles was to play, to, to provide a connectivity. And with 5G, they can be more, there's a, the other two roles to play. For example, a network as a service. They can provide the network to the enterprise. And the third, with the synergy of a 5G as an infrastructures and the synergies between 5G and the cloud, the synergy between the cloud and the intelligence platform, more roles can play. So that's why we say that 5G enrich the roles of the operators. It, it has three roles to play. The first, the connectivity service provider. The, ne the second is the network service provider. And third, integration service provider. Well, this, from now, I will introduce some of the use case of a 5G that Huawei involved and Vodafone involved. But first I will introduce the uh, overall pictures of a 5G to be. I use 5G to be as an abbreviation to explain the 5G work for the industry. <coughs> 5G to be is a such a hot, hot, hot topic for many years. I have to say that five years before, the industry underestimate the challenge of a 5G serve for the industry because 5G2P is all about the transformation. The transformations of the organizers of the company like Huawei and the operators, they have to understand not only consumer but also the industries. We have to understand the needs and the rules they play in the industry to, f to provide perfect solution for these kind of industries. So the organization reshuffle is necessary. Take China Telecom, for example. Right now, they already established nine sections. We call nine fleets, focusing on different industries. For example, like the manufacturers, the uh, car, car industry sections, and also the uh, chemical industry, education, and healthcare. Nine fleets dedicated to different industries to make sure that they understand the industry quite well and provide the best end-to-end -end solution, commercial solutions and service for this kind of uh, uh, industry. That's one of the transformation. And I believe this transformation is very painful, but we have to go through that. So this is a difficulty we, uh, we underestimate uh, three years or four, four years before. But the, on the other hand, I have to say that we underestimate the achievements made by 5G for the vertical industry. I'll provide you the chart. Right now, currently, the figure, just the, the first half of this year, first half of 2021, there are 5,000 plus commercial projects ongoing using 5G for the vertical. And now 5G already penetrate in more than 20 industries. The left chart show you that most of the, in, uh, most of the case happen in manufacturers. The second is the mining industries and also energy industries and, uh, and chemical industry. And when it comes to the modules, 
I mean, the devices for industry, you can see the numbers like on the right side that the, so far we have 200 plus choice of a CPE. And for the modules, industry modules, they're around 170 modules. The price is going down. And so uh, the, the buttons of the slide show you the how 5G, what is the usage scenarios for the different industry. For, the, for example, like for the steel making, company, uh, steel making company, 5G use in the process of a steel making. And uh, for the manufacturer, it used for sorting and uh, blanking monitoring and quality control in automobile companies and also the checking, uh, these kind of things, or have a 5G in place. So this is general pictures of the 5G uh, for business or 5G for vertical industries. This is one of the uh, examples we've done in China for mining industry. You understand that the mining industry, the utmost important thing is to make sure and avoid ac accidents triggered by the temperature change, triggered by the humidity, and triggered by some you know, gas leaking sort of things. To avoid accidents is utmost important. So they have to install a lot of cameras and sensing sensors to send back the image or the information or data back to the center office to make sure that they can do proactive measurements to avoid the, 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 the dangerous things happen. So they require technologies can transfer this data. Wire technology is not appropriate because it's very difficult to cable and wired underground. So that's why looking for the wireless technologies. But why 5G? Because the underground, you have to have the signal very strong and penetrate in a very complicated situation underground. So 5G, that's why they're looking at the 5G technology. So we offer the solution using 900 megahertz because it's a low band. If you are inside telco industries, you understand 900 have a very good propagation condition. So we offer them 900 5G products to provide the transmission for the mining industry. So in this chart, you can see that the 5G sending the, mess, uh, sending the data from the cameras installed along the roadwork underground and also along the conveyor belt monitoring the working condition to make sure there's nothing wrong. So this is the case we're using for mining industry. We just, there's a several mining industry apply 5G already. So no more fiction story, it's happening right now. And on the right side, you can see that that reductions of the personnel work underground. You see, currently, mining industry came across the issues that fall short of the manpower to work underground because it's too dangerous. People are reluctant to work underground for mining, for digging. So they, they are trying to find the most advanced way, so remote control, the digging machine, it's no more on the picture in the movie. It's happening in mining industry in Chinese market. So this, I give you the figure, with this remote control digging system, 60% reduction underground personnel achieved. You know, relax the burdens of the finding appropriate personnel for the mining industry. This is the case for, for this is one case, healthcare. Healthcare is easy to understand. Uh, actually, everybody say that healthcare is like a consumer market because you need to provide the internet, mobile internet service, but also you see inside of the dark, I mean, hospital, you have a lot of uh, instrument, you have a lot of machine. Back to 2019, there's no machine, I mean, for example, like the uh, physiological monitoring systems, the, uh, uh, the digital auscultation machines, and also these uh, robots in infection world do not su support 5G. One year before, I pay visit to one of the very famous hospitals in China. I see a lot of uh, machines building 5G modules, which means that they don't have to rely on the very heavy and the big CPU. You ha they have the module inside the machine. So with this support, this kind of machine in hospital don't have to rely on the Wi-Fi or wire. They use 5G to transfer the data, transfer the data from the ward to the central office. So the telemedicine is reality right now. 
you know, during the pandemic 2020, I, I got a figure that there's 3,000 telemedicine being done for the people who have the coronavirus. I mean, just within three months. So this is a very good example of how 5G for the society, serve for the society, and for the social responsibility. This case is about 5G MPN, there's a private, um, mobile private network for manufacturing. This is Meidi, one of the top one manufacturers for the electronics in China. Actually, the top, ma top level management of Meidi uh, have a very ambitious uh, strategies to go in for the di uh, to go for the digitalization in their company. So that's why they so much embracing the 5G technology. They they believe that they can do a lot of things. So it's very easy to cooperate with many company because their mindset embrace the 5G. We don't have to take time to educate what is 5G. They have a very professional team to understand that. So the cooperation goes quite well. And the con contract and projects fall into three stages. The first stage is to provide the service, 5G service, for monitoring. It's easy to understand, just like in mining industries, they have cameras alongside the production line and the send back the image for the quality control, so much so to improve the yield rate. We have figure on the left right side. And the second stage, they will use 5G for the POC control. This is very much core part of the production. And this is supposed to be delivered in the coming, coming year. So more cooperation with the MEDI will uh, in, in the plan. So I, maybe later I can share more knowledge about this project. And this also prove that 5G can perfectly address most of the requirements on network from MEDI. Well, that's two cases about in China. I just want to pick, uh, in, uh, take some other times to introduce the cooperation between Huawei and the Vodafone serving for Europe operators, uh, enterprise. Um, this is the case for the aeronautic company, which is the number one aeronautic technology service, which provide the fleet, I mean, digital fleet management, maintenance, repairs, and also the, sorry, the, the how we say, the um, cabin modification. What is the cabin, mo virtual, uh, there's a two case we offer for this company. The first one is virtual cabin modification. What is the cabin modification? When there's an aircraft they got, they have to modify the interiors of the aircraft to make sure that it's comfortable. For example, redesign the seat. Redesign the seat to make sure that meets the demands of a different various travelers, from child to the senior people. Redesign the overhead storage. Redefine the common rear area for the, for the lavatories, touchless lavatories, sort of things. All of these redefines need to be done over the 3D model map. And you know, the designer in the central office will change the design according to the feedback of the engineer on site in the aircraft, in the, in the cabin, and then redesign and modify the cabin, and then send back to the engineer on site. So the data exchange will be very huge. So we're thinking about the proper technologies. Why it is too difficult? Why technology is difficult? You know, the aircraft fly this way and that way. You can not get the wire easily. So they're thinking about the wireless technologies. Wireless, Wi-Fi is one of the choice. But remember, remember, the materials of the aircraft is made of iron. So how can the weakness signals of Wi-Fi can penetrate the iron materials that the aircraft is mission impossible. That's why they get zero signal or unstable signals using Wi-Fi. Finally, looking at 5G. So that's 5G, uh, that's what virtual cabin 
uh, the modification is one of the case, and they are very satisfied with this use case using 5G. The second is easy to understand, remote engine repair, because they put a lot of wireless cameras around the engine, so engineers repair, they send that image with AR technologies assistant, the office, I mean the senior engineer can assist the on-site engineer to repair this sort of thing. We also have calculations of the reduction of the, I mean, uh, cost, because to send senior engineer on site, they will cost 1,000 plus euros per hour. But if they stay in the central office, such kind of money can be reduced. Okay, this is the benefit of this kind of scenarios. And I, I understand that further cooperation will be done between the, these companies and the Vodafone's. The third, and this is the case we're using for one of the top chemical industry in Europe. And uh, you see that uh, we already apply the 5G in two scenarios. One is also for the new plant construction because the chemical industry is expanded their plants and the factories. So they rely on the 3D models the 3D model, we call it a piping and an instrumentation diagram, which provide full in detail diagrams of the piping, valve, instrumentations to make sure that the on-site engineer know how to build the pipe, build the tube, build the instrumentation to make work well for the chemical industry. So this also easy to understand a lot of data exchange between the sensory office and also the on-site of the plant. So this is one of the case. The other thing is that the chemical industry, everybody know that we have to monitor the status of the tube pipe instrumentation work properly to make sure there's no any dangerous things happen. So camera sensing put along the, I mean all around the in interiors of the building. So they send the data, this data to the console. And the people using the iPad to scan the QR code and get all the information for the management. We call it HMI, Human uh, Machine Interface for the monitoring. And this also give the 5G a significant role. So this is the case for the chemical industry. And all of these projects are commercial projects. <coughs> okay, I, I believe that I run out of time. I will finish in a very quick way. Previous use case is just about the localized solution. We call it a campus solution or private network. But what about the wide area IoT service? What about the future of IoT? Everybody talk about the IoT. Here I have a very clear message that maybe 2025 or 20 2030, there will only three main, main three IoT technologies which center on 5G or center on mobile technologies, 3GPP based mobile technology. Why we say so? IoT already, I can, say, I, I can see that IoT is relatively success but still come across a lot of difficulties and challenges. Scale economy are waiting. So, if you look at the Zigbee, look at the Bluetooth, this kind of short distance wireless technology, their limit is very obvious. They can just offer very short distance. They cannot do the roaming. Roaming capability is utmost important for the IoT industries. And 3D PPP based 5G center technologies can address the roaming requests. So I believe in futures, there will mainstream technology for IoT, Red Cap which is means that reduced capability as compared to 5G e EMBB module. Reduced cap capability means that it can reduce the cost, reduce the power consumption as compared to 5G, 5G EMBB modules. This is uh, target the speed around 100 megahertz or 50 megahertz. So this can serve for the videos, cameras, I explained before, it can be more cost effective. This is red cap. The second is narrowband IoT. Vodafone are very successful in narrowband IoT and it will still play a very significant role in the next decades. And the passive IoT. Passive IoT is very similar to the RFID, RFID. It's like a tag, require tag, and the readers and the antennas. So the RF electronic mag magnetic fields will transfer the data 
from a tag, from a tag, yeah, to identify for the purpose of identification and tracking. So this passive IoT will be mandatory, I believe, in the future. So this is a three major technologies will, will, will happen in the next decades. Let's wait and see, will that be the reality or not?